Hello there, how's it going? Uh, before we start, if you're in control of your website or you have influence over your website, then keep watching. If not, this is probably not something for you. You just might want to skip to the next video. Anyway, so how often do you think about your website? What is the role of your website? Is that something that you obsess about? Well, I think you should because your website is probably the most valuable asset that your business may have and you may not even know about it. Let's unpack this a little bit, right? So I think not enough attention goes to you know, what the purpose of a website really is. I think we're stuck in this uh, thinking that our website is some sort of an online brochure of our business. Of course, we've all come to terms with the fact that it's kind of difficult to have a business without a website, but that website is just like this dormant embassy out there online of our business. And yeah, sure, I mean, I guess we all understand that your website increasingly is that first contact point that prospects have with your business. It's often the first impression that you get. Today, since I'm so active on LinkedIn all the time, I'm always snooping around. Guess what I do when I find someone interesting? I go to their website. It gives me a good a first impression. Thing is, but it's not only enough to obsess over that first impression. You actually have to obsess about what that website does for you. Is it an asset or is it just a little brochure? What do I mean with an asset? Is that website actually pulling business in for you? When I, when I work with clients, I always have the same discussion. It usually turns out to be something like this. I say, you need work on your website. Yeah, but we just had it done. Don't you like it? I said, yes, I like it, but it's not working for you. It's actually, in fact, it's confusing people. So like, yeah, but um, why is that? Well, there's too much information on there. And then something very interesting happens. I always notice that a lot of people think like, yeah, but we have to have all that information there because people only visit our websites for a matter of seconds. And that's sometimes when you get a breakthrough because it's like, there's a reason why people only stay on your website for a few seconds. It's because they run away from the website because it's too complicated. It looks like too much work. So. The thing is, your website needs to, I'm going to use a buzzword here. I hate this word, but nothing else comes to mind. It needs to engage, oh, hold on, it needs to prompt uh, your visitors uh, to do something with you. And so often it's, it is really nothing there. It's like, okay, they have a website, it's red or it's green, it looks okay. Uh, I'm too busy, I can't really scroll around. Maybe they'll see a few bios, maybe click on the about page and 10 seconds later, they get an impression and they're gone. Will they ever come back to your website? It's very unlikely. You know, it's, you know, they've done it. It's like check, move on, right? So it's a hugely missed opportunity. Let me try to explain this to you with a metaphor. What if you had this salesperson who was out there facing your prospects? And first of all, he, would, uh, he or she would be very confusing, basically transmitting way too much information, but never taking any business cards home. Would you want to keep that kind of salesperson? Well, if you're the kind of business uh, where you, you want to keep, you know, poor talent around just to make, you know, where the B players keep C and D players around to make them look good, maybe you would. But most likely, I don't think you're going to have a big career as a salesperson or a salesperson won't, won't thrive if they go out there, uh, wind up confusing everybody and never taking any leads back home. Well, a brochure type website is like a salesperson which is not performing, right? Too much information, people check it out and then they run away, not good. What does a good salesperson do? A good salesperson engages people uh, and starts a dialogue, a dialogue that continues, a dialogue that eventually results into business. So if you want your website to be an asset, you've got to think of it as a salesperson, right? So when a visitor comes to the website, they should be compelled, compelled by something that matters to them. So what you need to do is you need to stick a story into your website that sort of gets people uh, curiosity going. And once they're curious, you need to use your website as that instrument that's going to create an ongoing dialogue. And how do you do that? If you offer something of value, something that's really of interest to that type of client that you want to work with, let them trade their email for that something interesting or valuable. And once you have their email, that's when the conversation can start. That's when the dialogue can start. So your website is really not a brochure. It's more like 
you know, an email collection machine, just like a salesperson should be. Anyway, just wanted to run that by you. I hope uh, it somehow makes sense. I hope it triggers a few thoughts. If you want to further explore this, you always know where to find me because that's what I do. I always look at how can we get an ongoing dialogue with our clients, preferably by putting a great story in front of them. And you know, a story is not enough. You need a mechanism to tell the story. And guess what? Your website is a pretty good way to get that mechanism going. Anyway, just want to share that with you. Thanks for watching and until very soon. Bye.